Hey guys, it's Comfort MC here again. Welcome to our 19th LBP tutorial. Um, today I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about another popular glitch. It's probably the thing that I do use most often. I think I've used it in every single one of my levels since I've learned about its use. And that is the Thek and Thak glitch. If you're not familiar, the Thek and Thak glitch is just a glitch that allows material to exist in layers that are not the normal thin and thick. So what I have here is a piece of thick and a piece of thick. I'll talk about nomenclature, why we call it that in a second, but basically these are just materials that are um, a little bit different than just the thick and the thin and it allows you to do some both interesting visual things and also some uh, it allows you to manipulate the layers in ways that you wouldn't normally be able to. Now, to see a little bit about the difference between thick, thick, and the normal thin and thick, we can compare them side by side here. This right here is the normal thin. You'll notice that it slides and it fits right behind the normal thick layer. And then this right here is the thick layer it fits in front of the thick and the thin layer. It's a ahead of both of those. And here's a normal thick layer. And now if I skew the camera quite a bit, you can see that the thick layer sticks out a little bit further than the thick layer. Uh, if you're really particular with your visuals, you can actually use this, this thick layer to get something that's a little less uh, thick than the normal thick layer. Now, why are they called thick and thick? Well, if I take a piece of the thick material, it's exactly the same thickness as a checkpoint. So the check, thick, yeah, kind of makes sense. So basically, this is exactly checkpoint thickness. So you may hear it call, uh, referred to as checkpoint thick material. I call it thick because it's faster, uh, and that's just what it's been called. As for the thack, the reason it's called this is because it's the exact same thickness as a sack boy. So thack and sack boy. Um, so what that means is because the sack bo a sack boy can go in front of checkpoint layers, the thack can also go in front of checkpoint layers. So this pr uh, provides some opportunities for you to be able to hide checkpoints behind material and so on and so forth. There are other objects that are the same thickness as this thack material, the same thickness as sack boy, such as a golf ball. So a golf ball is the same thickness. Point bubbles. And there's one other, or there are some other objects besides just checkpoints that exhibit the same thick thickness. Um, and an example of that is the hamster tube the back layer, the back wall of that hamster tube is in the thick sublayer. So it's the same thickness as a checkpoint, which means that you can take point bubbles and fit them inside there. You could take a golf ball and fit them inside there, sack bots and so on and so forth. But that also means that you can take the thick sublayer and fit that in there as well. So I had a lot of people asking how I got um, how I got the boxes in my Rubik's tube level to fit inside the hamster tube. Well, those boxes are just a thick piece of material. So that just fits right in there. Now, a little bit of history on these thick and thick layers. Um, they cannot be made anymore in Little Big Planet 2. You had to make them in Little Big Planet 1 and carry them over. So what I'm going to do at the end of this after I'm done with this video, I'm going to take these and put these in my data transfer level. So you guys can copy that and get these for yourselves. Um, but basically, the way that these were made is in LBP1, you would start with a thick piece of material. You'd make a copy of it. And then if you look uh, in LBP1, when you change the thickness of a material, it actually has an animation. So for a few frames, it's actually in between thick, or, excuse me, thick and thin. And so if you collapsed it to make it thin and hit the X button, what it would do is it would make a piece of material that was not quite thin. It would make it a little stick out a little bit. Um, so you, if you wanted, you could go back to Little Big Planet 1 and make your own. 
or, or you can just copy the ones that I'm going to give you and use those. Now, working with the thick and the thack layers does have um, a little bit of a weirdness to it. Um, as long as thick and thack layers are overlapping, you can't resize the layers, so you have to move them to resize. And as long as they're overlapping, you do have troubles with corner editing. So you can kind of do it, but it doesn't work well. And I'm fighting it right now, and it doesn't really work. So what you have to actually do is work with the layers apart, and then drag them to overlap. Um, now, the grid is definitely your friend when you're working with these layers. Because if I have, say, a thack layer here, and I try to smear it without the grid, it like goes off all funky and it doesn't uh, work like a normal square wood and you can see we get all these extra vertices. If you're working with the grid however you can copy and smear things and get it nice straight lines. The problem is you cannot overlap the two layers when you're using grid mode. So if I wanted to overlap say these two pieces of material make them both 4x4 four four grids and overlap them. I can't do it like this. I have to actually turn off the grid and line it up. And I'll show you in a second how we can use some more precise alignment techniques. But first I want to show you how we can use this to get shapes other than just squares. And we're going to use what's called the stamping method. So let's say that I wanted a, a circular piece of that thick material, that checkpoint thickness material. What I'm going to do is just use a regular piece of thick material for now, and I'm going to make a stamp with it. So I'll just make it a regular square, and then I'll cut a circle out of it. And now if I take this thick piece of material, move this up, make sure it's big enough to allow my stamp to work. If I make a copy of this, and then press triangle to delete that material, you are left with a perfect circle of the thick material. Now, if I wanted to make a circle piece of the thick material, so I'll just do that real quick, and I wanted to put it right in front of this thick material, material, remember we cannot use the grid with this, and so aligning that perfectly in the center is going to have, we're going to have to be a little creative with that. So what I actually do is I, and I'll show you what I do, I have a piece of thick material saved, so I'll just pull that out, and I'll make it bigger than my circle. Now I'm going to change the material of the square, and then embed the circle right inside of it. So both of these are the thick material, the checkpoint thickness, and they are merged together right now. They're stuck together and that's fine. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the thack. I'm going to embed it in a piece of thack material. Again, I'll change this material. I'm going to change this one to something that's not uh, white matter this time so it can actually move. And then I'm going to embed this right inside there. Okay, now Again, I, they're stuck together and I can't overlap them with the grid, but what I can do is let rods do the work for me. So if I take out a rod and I stick the two pieces of material together with this rod, and then I tweak this so that the rod has zero length, when I do that it's going to align this edge to this edge right here, because that rod will have zero length. And if I unpause deselect there it snaps into place. Now I can unpause again, delete my rod, delete my two materials, and I didn't have them the same size so they didn't line up, but the rod could have been used to uh, align that if I had been had better planning. Let's see if I can rewind this and fix it with the rod. Okay, so there's my rod. I don't want it to go all the way to the edge because then it won't be in the middle. Instead, I'll set it to 2.5. One grid length is 2.5. So now if I do the same thing, delete my rods, delete my folder materials, 
And there we go. Now that those two pieces of material are aligned perfectly in the center, and so I could attach a bolt to them if I really wanted, and now I could do whatever. So aligning things with the grid, you can work around that with the with rods. It's a little uh, annoying, but it, it is possible to do that. Now I just want to show you real quick an application of the Thec and the Thac materials, something that you wouldn't be able to do without them. And that is a door that I had made in Little Big Planet One. So kind of ignore the old the old uh, magnetic key switches and the old kind of logic here. But what I have set up here is I have a Thec door here. And then behind that I have a thin door. So I can move the thin door. I can't move the thec door because it's overlapping with a thac sublayer. So the, what's going to happen is this door is able to slide behind this thick material to the left and the right because there's two halves of the door. And then I have the thin door behind that goes up and down. So what that looks like when it opens, it looks like it's got a door that opens in multiple directions. So we're utilizing these extra layers that kind of fit in between the thin and the thick. And it allows us to make a door like such that wouldn't be possible without these extra layers. Okay, so a lot of people do use these thick and the thack layers, not for necessarily application purposes, but for adding details. So you could get two different pieces of material that are both thin-ish, but not quite thin. So if I had, say, if I was decorating with a thin piece of material, I could add another layer of decoration by using a thick piece of material. Oops, and that's not thin. So here I'll just, real quick, I grab this thick piece of material and I can press R2 and it will bump it to thin. So there now I've got some detail going on there. And I'll just make this thick. And so we can get some extra detail that wouldn't normally be possible with just the thick and the thin. And again, because that's in the checkpoint layer, you can walk in front of it. So I use that quite a bit in a lot of my levels for adding detail in certain places. Okay, so that's thick and the thick. I'm going to quickly add these to my, um, excuse me, my data transfer levels. So if you go to my Earth. My PSN is Comfort MC. If you go to my Earth, and there's my PSN if you're curious, this data transfer level, I'm just going to drop it in here, republish, and you guys can copy those and use them. Okay, so that's the basics of Thek and Thek. Uh, have a lot of applications, a lot of uses. Uh, so be creative. Uh, they offer a lot of potential. Take care, guys, and see you later. The tutorials will unleash not only exciting tools and objects, but knowledge and the deepest secrets of the cosmos.